strengthen me. Yeah. The death angel visit my family to comfort me. Yeah. 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 Ye
the Old Testament used the word salvation is mostly dealing with material matter, more physical than spiritual. But when you go into the New Testament, it takes on a deeper meaning. Meaning is it refers to the forgiveness of sin or the giving of eternal life. Our focus today will be on the New Testament meaning of salvation. It's more spiritual in nature than the Old Testament meaning, which is more material or spiritual. Sometimes the Bible uses the word save or salvation to refer to temporal or physical deliverance. However, today we will focus on the eternal, the spiritual use of this word. When we say the word save, or we, we have obtained salvation, what are we actually saying? I hear often people say, I'm saved, and sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. How many of you are familiar with that? Then I said, well, what do it mean to be saved? They said, well, I get to go to heaven. Is that all? My fifth sins are forgiven. Is that all? My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But is that all? To be saved, to be redeemed in Christ means that you have an everlasting relationship. Amen. Today I want to show you how the God here, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, take active roles in you becoming saved. It's not based upon what you do, it's based upon what they do in you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, when we look at the word saved, there's a number of passages of scripture that address these words. And one of them is found in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 10. You don't really have to turn there. But it said, God has not appointed us unto wrath. We are not appointed to the wrath that the wicked will receive. We are exempt from that because the spirit lives inside us. Amen? Amen. Also says that we have an everlasting relationship with God. We know him and we are allowed to worship him. And that's why we are exempt from that judgment. Salvation is like eternal life. Eternal is more than deliverance. It's more than being forgiven for our sins. It's an everlasting relationship with God. Example is, he says, where I am, you may be also. Gospel of John 14 and 3, God shall always be with us. He says, even unto the end of the world. When he gave him the great commission, Matthew 28 and 20. And then the Gospel of John, chapter 10, Jesus Christ says, I give unto them eternal life, and they should never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 10 and 28. And also in the book of Romans, it says, that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. It can be found in Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. God worked in salvation, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit all take an active role. In this journey of salvation. Amen. 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 Now I would like you to turn your Bibles to the Gospel of John once again. Chapter 6, beginning in verse 44. I told you I want to make known to you the active role that God takes in redeeming you. The first role, the first person of the Godhead. It's to take an active role towards you as God the Father. Here it says in John 6, 44, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. That's Christ speaking, referring to his Father. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him. God the Father draws you to Christ. Hello? Amen. From here I want you to go to verse 37 in the same chapter. God the Father draws. That's his active role. Now we're going to look at the role that the Son takes in this uh, journey of salvation. Beginning in verse 37, it reads as follows. says, And all that the Father give me shall come to me, and him that come to me I will in no wise cast out. So what, what Jesus is saying, whoever the Father sent him, he has to receive him. He can't cast him out. Because there's no variance between God the Son and God the Father. So all that the Father draws will come. And once they come, they're going to come to Jesus. And all they come to Jesus, he's going to receive them unto himself. 
he going to become their Lord. But once he received them unto themselves, now the Holy Spirit has a Lord. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13. Ephesians 1 and 13. We covered the one of the roles of the Father, of the Son, and now the role of the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit was promised in the book of Joel, and that promise was fulfilled in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. When they were in the upper room and they received the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in each other's language. Here in verse 13 it says, In whom you also trust after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also after that you believed. What did you believe? That Jesus is Lord? What did you believe? I believe that Jesus died for my sins. He went to a grave. He was buried three days, but on the third day he rose from the grave. Now he's seated at the right hand of the Father, soon to come again. That's what I believe. And if I believe that and I confess that with my lips, Romans 10 and 9 says, and believe in my heart that God raised me from the dead, then shall I, I, shall, I shall be saved. Amen. And it goes on to say, if you believe, then you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. God the Father draws you, Christ receives you, and the Holy Spirit seals you. Why do I need a seal? The seal is to preserve you. It keeps you. It identifies you as belonging to Jesus. It's your spiritual DNA. Yeah. If you don't have his spirit, then because he don't live inside of you. And if he don't live inside of you, you don't belong to him. Yeah. Salvation is because he loved us so. He loved us so he was willing to leave the comforts of heaven. Yeah. Mm. Lord, amen. Amen. You have some at least holiday in. You got brown. You be glad to be born where the animals live. Yes, that's where you got to be born at. The end is full. But I'm the King of Glory. I'm the Lord Strong and Mighty. I'm the Ancient of Days. I'm the Rose of Sharon. I'm the Bright Morning Star. Is it some place better for me? It was okay for Jesus to be born in the manger. And that's when he was born in the manger. When he made his grand entrance, when he actually made himself known to the world, he rode in on a donkey. Because what? He's a humble God. He's a God that loves you enough to see beyond your faults, beyond your circumstances and situations, and still love you. Yeah. Yes, I love you when you were chasing sin. I love you when you rejected me. I love you when you was a thief and a robber and a crackhead and a fornicator. I love you through all of your sin. Know this, all the things that 
that you are faced with a temporary why? Because I say they are temporary. Jesus. Yes, yes. We even may endure for a night, the joy in the morning. You may be sick today, but I won't leave you sick. You might die, but I won't leave you in this. Yes, you may be sad, but I won't leave sadness upon you, because in my presence is the fullness of joy. Yeah. You may be in trouble, but I am the Prince of Peace, Ooh. and I will not leave you in trouble. I may leave you where I found you last Why? because I'm God. Jesus, we're real. You better ask somebody. 
salvation may be this, it may be holy. Yes. And set me apart yes. for his work, for his purpose. Yes. God loves us. Yes. You wrote it all out. So I'm going to say, say from what? <laughs> he set me free from what? Talking too much? What is it that he set you free from? Yes, from the hands of the enemy, I was in the lion's mouth. I was in the flood. I was in the fire and furnace. I was in prison. You set me free. He set you free. He saved you. He redeemed you. 